Hello and welcome back to my garage. I'm Jeremy and today I'm going to show you how to wire up an electric fan circuit in any vehicle you want. So let's get started. Now right here we have an ignition switch. Now this obviously is where the key goes and as you turn the key it sends power to different parts of the vehicle. This thing right here is a five pin relay. We are only going to be using four of the pins on it today because one of them is just not needed. Here's one up close. Now this is a five pin relay and it's got the tab on the top. It's got a little diagram on the top showing you how it works. But most importantly on the bottom you have the five pins but next to each pin is a number that's stamped right into the relay telling you which pin number it is. On the top we have 87, on the bottom we have 30, on the left side we have 86, and on the right we have 85. And then in the middle is 87A but we're not going to use that one today. You'll note that those numbers correspond to this right here. So I'm going to be talking a lot about those in the next few minutes. So that's what I mean when I say these numbers. Now this right here is a circuit breaker and it is used in place of a fuse. And the cool thing about a circuit breaker is that it resets itself. So it's not like a fuse where if it blows you have to buy a new fuse every time. A circuit breaker just resets after a certain time frame and then you can continue using it again. So you could certainly replace this with a fuse of the appropriate size for the circuit. Um, but in this case, I bought a whole kit for wiring a electric fan and it came with a circuit breaker. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Now this right here is obviously an electric fan. You can see it's rated at 12 volts at 80 watts. And to figure out the amperage of a fan, you can actually just divide 80 watts divided by 12 volts is 6.67 amps. So you could get away with a 7.5 amp fuse for this specific fan. Now the bigger your fan, the more amps it's going to draw. So that's why it's always good to know the actual ratings of your fan because that's going to help you choose your fuse size or your circuit breaker size. Now this switch right here is just a manual override switch that you would put in the dashboard of your car if you ever want to just force your fan to turn on. Now you don't need to have that switch, but it's just a nice bonus to have. Last thing on the list is the actual temperature switch itself. Now this one is a 175 to 185 switch. So normally this mounts right in your engine block itself or your cylinder head, maybe even your radiator. And when it gets to 185 degrees, it grounds itself and it tells the relay to turn on by doing that. And when it gets the engine cooled down to 175 degrees, it clicks off and it turns your relay off and your fan turns off. For today's demonstration, I have a little candle that I put under this temperature switch that we're going to light up and we're going to see if it turns the fan on. So that's going to be pretty fun. So we now know all the components that make this work. Now let's go through the wiring. Now let's start with the battery side of the circuit. This right here is an ignition switch which you probably already have. So you probably don't need this fuse here and this ignition switch. You really just need to have ignition power going to the relay on pin 86. So that's what this does. We have power coming in through the fuse into the ignition switch. And when you turn the switch to the run position, when the engine's running, this wire gets power, which is pin 86. So you need to make sure when the car is running, you want power on pin 86. Now the other red wire here goes to the circuit breaker, which is just protecting the whole circuit and then it has a wire coming out of the circuit breaker that goes to pin 30 on the relay. Now that's the main power feed for your fan that goes through the breaker to the relay and then it goes out of pin 87 on the relay and goes to the fan. So that's actually the power circuit for your fan. Now pin 85 is the last wire on the relay that we haven't talked about. Now all you want to do to turn this whole circuit on is ground pin 85. Now we actually do that through two different methods. We have the temperature switch, which grounds the wire to the engine block, or we have the override switch, which grounds it to, you know, some ground point under your dashboard. So let's follow this wire. We have pin 85 coming out of the relay, and it goes to the temperature switch. Now as soon as this temperature switch goes to 185 degrees, it grounds the wire, and it turns the relay on, and then power goes through the circuit breaker, in pin 30, out pin 87, and to your motor. The other option for grounding pin 85 
is over here on your interior switch. So you can follow the wire and it goes over to your switch. And then the other side of your switch is just gonna go to ground. So you can ground this to your firewall or any kind of ground under your dashboard. And then as soon as you flip the switch, all you're doing is grounding pin 85 to something under your dash. And by doing that, you turn the relay on and then again, the power comes through the circuit breaker in pin 30 and out pin 87 to your fan. Now, as long as you wire this right, when you flip the switch, the fan will turn on, or when this gets to 185 degrees, the fan will turn on. And if you turn this off, your ignition switch, nothing works anymore. So no matter how hot this gets, or if you flip this switch in any direction, that fan won't turn on if your ignition switch is off. But as soon as you turn the ignition switch on, suddenly it gives power to your relay, and all you have to do is ground the relay through this or through this, and then your fan will work again. Now one additional wire that you may be wondering about is this third wire. It's a brown one, and it just goes over and it grounds my metal plate here that's holding my temperature switch. You don't need that in your car because your temperature switch is going to be in your engine block or your cylinder head, and your engine block is gonna be grounded through a separate ground wire. But in my circuit, I needed to have this grounded to my plate and then to my ground so that when I light the candle underneath it, it will actually turn the fan on. Okay, let's do what we've all been waiting for and light the candle to see if it turns on the fan. All right, we've got the flame nice and close. And now we just have to wait. Well, I guess that worked. As you saw, the thermostat or the temperature switch got hot enough to turn the fan on. And then when I pulled the candle away and the fan turned on, it blew a whole bunch of air around here and it cooled off this temperature switch and turned the fan back off again. So it worked exactly how we expected. And then we also have this switch, which still turns it on manually. And there it is. There's, a, uh, there's an electric fan circuit for you. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Definitely leave me a comment down below, subscribe, share it with a friend, and like the video. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you on the next one.